We're here today under a special and continuing order to consider amendments to Senate Bill 800, the amended budget for 2010-2012 biennium. The budget recommendations before you today are the result of careful, thoughtful choices about how best to use the resources of the Commonwealth. The members of your Finance Committee have worked hard to bring forth a balanced budget package for your consideration. I'm happy to say the task this year has been considerably easier than last year when we were faced with the challenge of closing a $4.5 billion budget gap. In contrast to the last three years where we were on a steady diet of budget cutting, this year we had a modest amount of additional revenues to work with, less than one-half of one percent. Not much, less than one half of one percent. Above the amount we, we assumed last year for our two year budget, we are in, in fact seeing a more positive job growth, increasing signs of an economic recovery. While that is good news, your Finance Committee remains cautious in its approach to how best to use these limited resources. As a result of this thoughtful approach, you will not see costly initiatives funded in these budget recommendations. What you will see is a limited restoration of funding reductions in our core responsibilities of education, health care, public safety, along with targeted new investments in higher education and economic development. To address these priorities, the committee amendments redirect $150 million in general funds that were proposed for transportation. We agree transportation is a core service, a core service of state government, which is why the transportation bill receives strong support. But the fact is we're operating our current budget on the level of revenues which we collected in 2006, five years ago. Our scarce general fund dollars must be directed first toward education, our vital health care safety net services, and public safety. Many of you attended the briefing this morning, which I greatly appreciate. Let me touch on a few key features of the budget before you. As is typically the case, public education is our top funding priority because K-12 education is vital to the higher education pipeline and economic future of the Commonwealth. We are providing a net $100 million above the budget as introduced to regain some of the ground we lost during the past two years. The recommendations provide the state share of an additional $130 per student, which helps us to keep the commitment we made last session regarding the hold harmless payments as well as full funding of SOQ textbook amounts. Without a doubt, the first dollar of additional revenue must support our responsibility to the children of Virginia. Both the Senate and House strongly endorse the top jobs higher education legislation spearheaded by Senators Houck and Norman. We recommend total new funding for roughly $100 million to support the objectives of that important legislation, including $33 million toward our commitment to fund basic operating costs for institutions, especially in the face of growing enrollments, enrollments. We also recommend over $16 million for financial aid, a portion of which will go toward addressing college affordability for Virginia's middle-income families. It's been too long since we've been able to provide additional resources for higher education. We must invest in these institutions to produce the teachers, the engineers, and the entrepreneurs that grow Virginia's economy. Maintaining access to health care, especially for the most vulnerable Virginians, remains a top priority. In the area of health and human resources, we are able to reduce cuts to disabled Virginians by restoring respite care services, restoring funding for at-risk youth and CSA, by minimizing further reductions to local services. Most importantly, our recommendations help maximize restorations to our key Medicaid providers, who are, in fact, our partners in the delivery of health services to many Virginians. And we endorse the governor's proposal to restore community-based services for those intellectual, intellectual disabilities with, and, mental health, and mental illness to improve services in state facilities. In the area of public safety, our recommendations reflect our commitment to support local law enforcement by closing the second-year hole in the, in the state aid localities with police departments, the 599 program. And by, producing, and by providing funds for local sheriffs and regional jails, our recommendations also provide additional prison capacity to make sure we're sharing the burden of overcrowding between our state prisons and local jails. Small businesses are the key to Virginia's economic recovery and job creation. 
And so our recommendations focus on resources for these programs that support budding entrepreneurs. Our budget embraces the recommendations of the Governor's Commission on Economic Development and Job Creation, providing almost $47 million for economic development initiatives. Finally, our recommendations include several actions on employee be benefits and compensation. Last year, we made the decision we would pay less than expected contribution rate for the biennium to the Virginia Retirement System for state employees and teachers. This action resulted in two-year savings to the state of over $600 million. We did not make this decision lightly. The Senate has long worked toward fulfilling to full funding of the board-approved BRS and recommendations to sustain the health of our retirement system. To that end, last year the Senate insisted on language to require repayment of these funds to the BRS with interest, beginning next by the, that is the beginning next biennium. We support the concept of starting the repayment early in FY 2012. Our recommendations will include $100 million toward that purpose. We also point out that Senator Howe's constitutional amendment, which passed this body, would require the state to pay VRS board approved rate unless we find ourselves in another deep economic turndown, downturn. We believe these actions demonstrate our commitment to strengthening our retirement system. In regard to employee compensation, we did not feel it was appropriate at this time to ask state employees to absorb a 2% reduction in their pay. And so our budget re recommendations reverse the proposed change in the budget as introduced. We hope in the near future we'll be able to return to regular compensation increases for all our employees. In closing, let me observe that Virginia's prospects for economic growth and vitality are bright indeed. As you can see, your finance committee made prudent, thoughtful choices in budget recommendation. Choices that will strengthen Virginia as we continue to emerge from this recession and will provide positive returns for many years to come.